Alfred Delp, S.J. Mannheim, Grand Duchy of Baden, the 15th of September 1907, Berlin, the 2nd of February 1945, was a German Jesuit priest and philosopher of the German resistance. A member of the Inner Kreisau Circle Resistance Group, he is considered a significant figure in Catholic resistance to Nazism. Falsely implicated in the failed 1944 July plot to overthrow Adolf Hitler, Delp was arrested and sentenced to death. He was executed in 1945. Early life and education Alfred Delp was born in Mannheim, Grand Duchy of Baden, to a Catholic mother and a Protestant father. Although he was baptized as a Catholic, he attended a Protestant elementary school and was confirmed in the Lutheran Church in 1921. Following a bitter argument with the Lutheran pastor, he requested and received the sacraments of First Communion and Confirmation in the Catholic Church. His Catholic pastor recognized the boy's intelligence and love for learning and arranged for him to study at the Gotheschule in Dieburg. Possibly because of the dual upbringing, he became later an ardent proponent of radically better relations between the churches. Thereafter, Delp's youth was molded mainly by the Bund Neudeutschland Catholic Youth Movement. Immediately after passing his abitur, in which he was top of his class, he joined the Society of Jesus in 1926. Following philosophy studies at Pollock, he worked for three years as a prefect and sports teacher at Stella Matutina College in Feldkirch, Austria, where in 1933, he first experienced the Nazi regime, which forced an exodus of virtually all German students from Austria and thus the Stella Matutina by means of a punitive 1,000 mark fine to be paid by anyone entering Austria. With his director, F. R. Otto Fowler and Professor Alois Grimm, he was among the first to arrive in the Black Forest, where the Jesuits opened Colleg Street Blasian for some 300 students forced out of Austria. After St. Blasian, he completed his theology studies in Wachenberg, Holland 1934-1936, and in Frankfurt 1936-1937. Ministry In 1935, Delp published his tragic existence, propagating a God-based humanism and reviewing the existentialism of Martin Heidegger. In 1937, Delp was ordained a Catholic priest in Munich. Delp had wanted to study for a doctorate in philosophy at the University of Munich, but he was refused admission to the university for political reasons. From 1939 on, he worked on the editorial staff of the Jesuit journal Stimmen der Zeit, Voices of the Times until the Nazis suppressed it in April 1941. He was then assigned as rector of St. Georg Church, part of Heilig Blut Parish in the Munich neighborhood Bogenhausen. He preached both at Heilig Blut and St. Georg, and also secretly helped Jews who were escaping to Switzerland through the underground. <laughs> Resistance Outspoken opposition to the Nazis by individual Jesuits resulted in harsh response from government officials, including imprisonment of priests in concentration camps. The government takeover of church property, Klostersturm, resulted in the loss of valuable properties such as that of Stimmen der Zeit, and limited the work of the Jesuits in Germany. The Jesuit provincial, Augustin Roche, Father Delp's superior in Munich, became active in the underground resistance to Hitler. It was Roche who introduced Delp to the Kreisau Circle. As of 1942, Delp met regularly with the clandestine group around Helmuth James Graf von Moltke to develop a model for a new social order after the Third Reich came to an end. Delp's role was to explain Catholic social teaching to the group, and to arrange contacts between Moltke and Catholic leaders, including Archbishop later Cardinal Conrad Praising of Berlin. Arrest and trial After the 20th of July plot to assassinate Hitler failed, a special Gestapo commission arrested and interrogated all known members of the resistance. Delp was arrested in Munich on 28 July 1944, eight days after Klaus von Stauffenberg's attempt on Hitler's life, although he was not directly involved in the plot. He was transferred to Tegel Prison in Berlin. While in prison, he secretly began to say Mass and wrote letters, reflections on Advent, on Christmas, and other spiritual subjects, which were smuggled out of the prison before his trial. On 8 December 1944, Delp had a visit from Franz von Tattenbach S.J., sent by Roche to receive his final vows to the Jesuit order. 
This was supposedly forbidden, but the attending policeman did not understand what was going on. Delp wrote on the same day, It was too much, what a fulfillment, I prayed for it so much, I gave my life away. My chains are now without any meaning, because God found me worthy of the vincula amoris. Chains of Love, he was tried, together with Helmuth James Graf von Moltke, Franz Spur, and Eugen Gersten Meyer, before the People's Court on 9-11 January 1945, with Roland Freisler presiding. Alfred Delp, Helmuth von Moltke, and Franz Spur were sentenced to death by hanging for high treason and treason. The court had dropped the charge against Delp of being aware of the 20th of July plot, but his dedication to the Kreisau Circle, his work as a Jesuit priest, and his Christian social worldview were enough to seal his fate as a victim of the Nazi system of justice. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Execution. While he was in prison, the Gestapo offered Delp his freedom in return for his leaving the Jesuits, but he rejected it. Delp, like all prisoners connected with 20 July, was required to wear handcuffs day and night. Prisoners being taken to execution were handcuffed with their hands behind their backs. The sentence was carried out on 2 February 1945 at Plötzensee Prison in Berlin. The very next day, Roland Freisler was killed in an air raid. A special order by Heinrich Himmler required that the remains of all prisoners executed in connection with the 20th of July plot be cremated, and their ashes scattered over the sewage fields. Accordingly, the body of Alfred Delp was cremated and his ashes disposed of somewhere near Berlin, nobody knows where. Posthumous <laughs> honors <laughs> <laughs> In September 1949, the superior F. R. Otto Fahler at Colleg Street Blasian unveiled memorial plaques for two former educators and teachers slain by the Nazis, namely Alfred Delp and Alois Grimm, the latter's ashes being buried there. Some 30 years later, Colleg Street Blasian named its new theater hall after Alfred Delp. The Alfred Delp Memorial Chapel was built in Lampertheim, consecrated on 2 February 1965, at the 20th anniversary of his martyrdom. Many schools in Germany are named after Alfred Delp, among them one in Bremerhaven. In Mannheim, a Catholic student residence is named for him. The guesthouse on the campus of the Canisius College in Berlin also bears his name. In Dieburg, the uppermost level at the gymnasium, the Alfred Delp School, the Catholic Community Center, the Father Delp House, and a street are named after him. The Bundeswehr named its barracks in Donauwerth the Alfred Delp Kasern. In 1955, the Wasserberger Strasse, a street in Munich Bogenhausen has been renamed to Delpstrasse, where Eva Braun resided from 1935 in a villa. F. R. Delp was included among the almost other 900 Catholics in a list of people having suffered a violent death for adherence to the Christian faith, published in 1999 as Zugen für Christus. Das Deutsche Martyrologium de 20. Jarunderts, Witnesses for Christ. The German Martyrology of the Twentieth Century, prepared by M. G. R. Helmut Mahl under the auspices of the German Bishops' Conference. Despite the book's subtitle, F. R. Delp's appearing is a sign of respect with only informal significance and does not amount to beatification or the granting of liturgical veneration. <laughs> beatification process Delp's final parish in Munich sent documentation supporting the start of his official beatification process to the Archbishop of Berlin, Cardinal Georg Straczynski, in January 1990. Writings Delp's book In the Face of Death, published in 1956, gathered together his meditations, notes, fragments of his diary and letters, written during his six months' imprisonment, and has been compared to Dietrich Bonhoeffer's, Letters and Papers from Prison. It is the first part of a trilogy that also includes Committed to the Earth and the Mighty God. The American edition of his Prison Meditations, 1963, had an introduction by Thomas Merton, who considered him a mystic in his work perhaps the most insightful Christian meditations of our time." The German edition of his collected works 1982 was edited by F. R. Roman Bleistein S. J. in five volumes. Delps is most well known for his writings that, after his arrest, were smuggled out of prison and published. Because his imprisonment was during the Christmas season, many of these last writings on the theme of Advent and the coming of Jesus. 
In one of his last letters, Delp wrote, All of life is Advent. Many Christians continue to read and be inspired by Delp's life and witness. Topic. Quotes God does not need great pathos or great works. He needs greatness of hearts. He cannot calculate with zeros. It is the time of sowing, not of harvesting. God is sowing, one day he will harvest again. I will try to do one thing. I will try to at least be a healthy and fruitful seed, falling into the soil. And into the Lord God's hand. Whoever does not have the courage to make history, becomes its poor object. Let's do it. Many of the things that are happening today would never have happened if we had been living in that longing, that disquiet of heart which comes when we are faced with God, and when we look clearly at things as they really are. If we had done this, God would have withheld his hand from many of the things that now shake and crush our lives. We would have come to terms with and judged the limits of our own competence. When we get out of here, we will show, that, ecumenicism, is more than personal friendship. We will continue to carry the historical burden of our separated churches, as baggage and inheritance. But never again shall it became shameful to Christ. Like you, I do not believe in the utopia of complete unity stews. But the one Christ is undivided, and when undivided love leads to him, we will do better than our fighting predecessors and contemporaries. If there was a little more light and truth in the world through one human being, his life has had meaning. In half an hour, I'll know more than you do. These were the last words of Alfred Delp. He whispered them jokingly, to the prison chaplain Rev. Peter Buchholz, who accompanied him to his execution. We need people who are moved by the horrific calamities and emerge from them with the knowledge that those who look to the Lord will be preserved by him, even if they are hounded from the earth. Someday, others shall be able to live better and happier lives because we died. Written after the death sentence was passed. Topic. Works Tragisch Existence. Zur Philosophie Martin Heidegger's, Herder, Freiburg im Breisgau, 1935. Gesemelt Schriften, German edition of his collected writings, edited by Roman Bleistein S.J. 1. Geiselisch Schriften, 1982. 2. Philosophische Schriften, 1983. 3. Predigten und Ansprechen, 1983. 4. Aus dem Gefängnis, 1984. 5. Brief, Texte, Resentionen, 1988. Topic. See also Jesuits and Nazi Germany. Topic. Notes. Topic. Literature. English sources. Cody, Mary Frances, with bound hands: A Jesuit in Nazi Germany. Loyola Press, Chicago, 2003. ISBN 0-8294-1794-X. Alfred Delp, Advent of the Heart, Seasonal Sermons and Prison Writings 1941-1944, Ignatius Press, San Francisco, 2006, ISBN 1-58617-081-3. Biographical Information pp. 13-19 and pp. 173-189. Anton Gill, An Honorable Defeat, Henry Holt, New York, 1994. Cruiser Interview, Personal Memories of Father Delp as Pastor in Munich Biography at GDW Berlin, the Center for Remembrance of the German Resistance Delp honored by Raoul Wallenberg Foundation regarding Alfred Delp's assistance to Jews German sources Roman Bleistein, Alfred Delp, Geschichte eines Zugen Alfred Delp, A Witness's Story, Necht Verlag, Frankfurt am Main 1989, ISBN 3-7820-0598-8 Gunther Salton, Der Kreuz des Leben, Schlüssler, Mannheim 2004, 2, ISBN 3 00 012687 2. Elke Endra, Gemeinsam gegen Hitler. Peter Alfred Delp und Helmuth James Graf von Moltke, Kreuz Verlag, Stuttgart 2007, ISBN 978 3 7831 2881 9. 
Rita Hobb, Heinrich Schreiber, Alfred Delp, Held Gegen Hitler, Alfred Delp, Hero Against Hitler, Ector Verlag, Würzburg 2005, ISBN 3 429 02665 2. Christian Feldman, Alfred Delp. Leben gegen den Strom, Alfred Delp, Life Against the Current, Herder, Freiburg 2005, ISBN 3 451 28569X. Glaube als Widerstandskraft. Edith Stein, Alfred Delp, Dietrich Bonhoeffer Faith is Strength to Resist, Edith Stein, Alfred Delp, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, 1987, ISBN 3-7820-0523-6 External links Works by or about Alfred Delp in Libraries WorldCat Catalog Alfred Delp Society Official Website German. Translation of a Delp sermon about his ordination as priest Delp honored by Raoul Wallenberg Foundation in English Biography at GDW Berlin, the Center for Remembrance of the German Resistance in English Alfred Delp S.J., a man transformed, Catholic Ireland website Alfred Delp in the German National Library Catalogue Biography at the German Historical Museum an Anglican Meditation on Delp's Advent Sermons from Anglicans Online in English Biography at Jesuten Online in German Article on the 60th anniversary of Alfred Delp's death, with a biography in German